Hello, Avid readers. I am so happy to be here with Jamie Foley. And we are going to be talking about all the books, all the things, all the writing, all the fun stuff today. But Jamie, why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Oh, just a little bit? I have wear too many hats. <laughs> as, much, <I> <laughs> as much as you want. Just go for it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm an uh, independent author of Christian science fiction and fantasy. Um, I also work for Enclave Publishing. I do, I'm a managing editor over there and I do production and I do typesetting for the Christian Writers Institute. Mm -hmm. And on my downtime, I am a mom of a little kid. <laughs> and I also do map design sometimes, like for a recent project for the Babylon Bee. So basically, I do way too many things. <laughs> Uh, I don't know anyone else that might do too many things, but <laughs> I love all the things that you're doing. And wait, we, I just have to say, what is the map design? Because that sounds amazing. Okay, so oh tell us goodness. a little bit more about that. Okay, so um, I have one right here, actually. Yes. Um, this is part of the swag pack that I'm going to be giving away today. <gasps> so in my book Emberhawk, um, yes. the main character, one of the main characters is a cartographer. He's a scout. And so as he goes out to enemy territory, he's like drawing maps and he's um, criticized by the chiefess for his terrible handwriting. And so I did like a, a you know, a rough hand drawn map. That is so cool. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Is there, is, it, is that in Silver Blood too? Yes. It's I have in it. Front. Okay. Oh, 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 ah, yeah. Right here. There it is. <laughs> Yay, so cool. Okay, so we have to talk about your book. So this one run, won an award at Rail Makers. Uh, remind me which award it won. Um, the General Fantasy Award. For... So the General Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yay. But before we get to that one, we have to talk about this one because it goes first. So Ember yes. Hop is right there. And I was like running up to our interview because I'm sitting there making tacos tonight for my family, listening to the book, completely absorbed. Like, I'm not in this world. I am with these characters and this girl has a her ankle and this guy can hair <laughs> and all this stuff. And I'm like, so absorbed in this book. And then I realized, oh my goodness, we're supposed to be like getting on live in a couple of minutes. So I'm listening uh... up here. Sorry, I guess. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. It is so good. Oh, it is I'm so, so glad you like it. Hearing like, that right, from you, that's a huge compliment. <laughs> right from the beginning, she's getting like chased by this big thing, this monster, and it's well, it's like it's a wild thing. And <laughs> then you're like, what's happening? And then all these characters come, and okay, you have to explain this because it's similar to a certain era in our history but with all these really cool elements so I'm not doing it any justice once you start by telling <laughs> about these books well I'm not super good at pitching my own books I mostly like to promote other people's books but yeah. I'll try my best okay, okay. so my great-grandmother was Cherokee and so I really leaned into that as a kid and I learned a lot about the Native American tribes and I learned that um, a lot of people tend to think of Native Americans as a single people group which is not true at all <laughs> there was mm -hmm. many many different tribes they had all different languages different customs some were peaceful some were hostile some were neutral and they had different beliefs and all kinds of different things. And so um, the Emberhawk storyline is based on the question of like what would have happened um, during the American Revolution with those tribal politics. Like were there tribes that allied with the settlers mm -hmm. and the rebels? Um, were there ones who were hostile? Were there ones who have allied with the British? But the British queen is actually an elemental who thinks she's a goddess and let's throw in some fire magic and all kinds of other fantasy and elements like water of speaking to her and like all these that looks so interesting yeah <laughs> it's it's unique for sure it's unique yeah so and, and and then there's like the disappearing so there's these the people have different what did, what were they called powers or how would you describe it 
Yeah, so it's a take on the Grecian elements, so mm -hmm. fire, water, earth, and air, except for I took a more scientific route to it. So instead of fire, it's energy. And so some of the people of the tribes have this magic, and some of them specialize in manipulating light, and they can bend it around themselves and make themselves invisible. Um, there's other tribes that specialize in sound wave, sound energy, and can use that to be silent and maybe assassinate some people, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's the water instead of being just water and all all of its forms like ice and everything it's just liquid but it could be any kind of liquid um so it's more of the like gas liquid mm -hmm. and solid um so it's a little more scientific but hopefully in a, a little bit of a, a fun way so it's just so cool because if you love history like it has the elements of historical fiction but it also has these fantasy elements that are like you were talking about like these, the wind and or the fire and the water, like all these elements there. And then there's the storyline with these super interesting characters and these clashes with people that should be enemies, but then they're helping each other out. And it's, it's just so fascinating and it's well-written. So it's very Thank quick you. pace. Yeah. It's very quick pace. Um, it's quick pace as in exciting, but not that you're going to get lost at what's happening. Cause I like, totally, and follow what's happening and so i love all the elements and let's talk about the covers so do you have the ember hawk one there to hold up yes I have it might it might be backwards blood. but yeah i think they show up i think they show up normal but look at oh, these okay covers, good. <laughs> which are amazing uh they look so good and so just totally see the i'm gonna put close can you see that those elements there with the Native American, which is, yeah, it's so cool. I love it. And I love, so, okay, how Thank you. did you come up with this? Because <laughs> it's so amazing. <laughs> well, I could ask you how you came up with your books and you might we have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I mean, honestly, I take inspiration from a ton of different mm -hmm. areas in life. Um, today, as I was driving my kid home from school, I was inspired by a song for a new sort of storyline. So, you know, it's just any, any type of life. I actually designed these covers and it's, I have an unfair advantage because I went to college. Wait, for, wait, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? Wait, wait, you designed these covers? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So sorry. She I'm sorry, I didn't really well and does the art too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I well, it's a little unfair because I, I went to college for graphic art and stuff like mm. that. So that's kind of the stuff that I do for Enclave. I do the interior design for Enclave. So the typesetting. So for typesetting for your book with Enclave Publishing, I will be this doing that coming. as well. So I'm yeah. glad you like my art style then. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. I love all the things about it. Okay. We have a comment from Gretchen. She says, I was not <gasps> Hi, sure. Gretchen. It was a book I was going to like. Less than a chapter in, I was hooked, devoured it, and then Silver Blood. And then I bought both audiobooks and listened to them back to back. <laughs> I cannot wait uh, for book three. So Gretchen, awesome. And I could totally see why you did that. Because I started yesterday on the way home from homeschool co-op. And so I've listened yesterday and a little bit today as I'm making dinner. And I'm like, okay, what, what's happening in the world? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be doing an interview right now. <laughs> I mean, tacos so, are very important. You got to focus on it, the tacos. As the well. people are, and my my one of my son, my oldest son, comes over with my grandkids on Wednesday nights. So all the people are eating while I'm talking to you, and they have tacos now. And I was able to listen to more of the book. So, why are you Why are you talking to me instead of eating tacos? That is a massive <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> they will. There will be plenty. I, I cook way. I could like feed an army. Okay, because uh, every time. Yeah, because I'm yeah. Texan. And so my priority level for tacos is like way, way up, you know, I mean, yep. So Erin said, what was inspiration? She talked about her um, grandmother was Cherokee. And I was going to mention this because this is really cool. Let me see if I could pull it up fast enough. So on my ancestry.com, I'm going to show you this right here. So, um, oh, 19 percent Native American. I don't know if you can see. Nice. Well, Do you know but what it, tribe? It's indigenous Mexico. So, oh, cool. so it's from Michoacan, Mexico. My grandma's Hispanic, but the, a lot of Native American is mixed in. You know, it's Spanish and it's uh, Native American. And I was looking it up. And from Michoacan, they're mostly from Inca. They're the cl most closely related to Inca because oh, wow. after the conquistadors came, the Incas moved up to 
Mexico, the ones that escaped. And so I, I didn't I'm, know that. I thought they were further south. That's really interesting. They moved up. I, I'm researching. So this is, I can do all the ancestry stuff like all the time too. But I love that you have that, like that heritage that you just are like going to add all these elements and all these right. things to it. Now, so. I should clarify, it's just a little bit. She was like my great grandmother. But when I was mm -hmm. a little girl, I was all into it, but mostly, oh, yeah. mostly I'm like Irish and German Texan, you know, but yeah. I just have a love for the tribes and learning history about all peoples. Honestly, I think America has a fascinating like history of so many different types of peoples. And so that's what Emberhawk is about. Honestly, it's almost like a game of Thrones. Um, and yeah. the pol there's a lot of politics going on of a lot of different people groups. Um, but without all the X-rated nasty stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's a clean read. I think this is one thing that I love about speculative fiction is that you can totally buy these books for your child or your grandchild or your cousin or whoever. And it's fascinating. It's interesting. It's going to have all these elements that people love, like on TV shows that are really popular, but it's clean. Like they're, I, I think one part you said he like swore under his breath or something. Like it's very, that's as bad as it's going to get. I mean, there's, blood there's fighting you know there there's, yeah there is but, fighting you know it's a classic fantasy story so there's definitely a battle of good versus evil and there are some scary scenes so even though it's clean i still would say like maybe 14 and up mm -hmm. at the lowest just because if you're if your kid can read like lord of the rings you can totally read yes. this yeah so what I'm doing with my 12 year old, we're doing, we're in the middle of the Hobbit right now, which oh, okay. in there they're... that's like, yeah, it's totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, so very cool. Okay. So I love that you, you started with Emberhawk and then you're going into Silver Blood. And now I know because of Gretchen's comment, is there going to be a book three that's coming? Yes, there's definitely a book three and there might be a book four. Oh, like I, might be, you don't know if you're going to wrap it up or. Uh, so I, it's, it's always been planned to be a trilogy. And then mm -hmm. I was talking to one of my writing partners um, the other day and she was like, you have so much going on here. Why don't you just split it in half at this really crucial moment that's going to mm -hmm. happen in the storyline? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I, and, I can do that. <laughs> uh, maybe I can't. So I'm looking into it now. No promises, but okay. um, I promise to write an amazing storyline, no matter how many books it, it comes out to. There we go. Uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So cool. Okay. So uh, Silver Blood came out. Was it last year that Silver Blood came out? 2022. Yeah. 2022. Yeah. So. Wait. Yeah, we have to look at this thing. Sorry, I think it was actually 2021 and it won the award in 2022. Oh, that's true. Yes. Sorry about that. Because in publishing, we are always like way years ahead and it's hard I know. to like, figure out. <laughs> For Enclave, we're like working 2022 tw or 2024, 2025. So I'm sorry, I'm all messed up. It came out in 2021. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. So, but the first two are out. So well worth it. You are working on book three. Like, are you, will it be released like next year or what are your plans on that? I would like to do it by the end of this year. Okay. So my oh. poor fans have been waiting a long time. <laughs> they have. I know. I just did a four, book four in a series that the third one released in 2016. So you're doing good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing good. All right. So hopefully by the end of the year, you have book three. Maybe next year, there'll be book four or two. So do you think you're going to continue writing with this, these type of, uh, Native Americans and these elements, or do you have, I know this is a crazy question. Do you have other story ideas that you want to pursue? I definitely have a new series that I'm also working on. Oh, um, okay. yeah. That one's probably going to be a duology. Um, mm -hmm. It's also going to be epic fantasy, but instead of more of the young adult, it's probably going to be adult. Um, God is leading me in the direction to talk about some themes that are a little more adult, not in their, mm. not in that they're inappropriate in, at all, right. just that, um, well, infertility is a, is a big issue in my life. And <laughs> I had this idea for what, what would happen to a princess who was married off for a marriage alliance if she was infertile. And right. so she was not keeping her into the bargain. And I was doing some research into the Babylonians and like their marriage mm -hmm. practices. And you could mm -hmm. like return a wife if she didn't give birth within a certain amount of time. And so I thought, what, what would happen to a, what, what would 
you know, what would that be like if it happened to a princess um, in a magical scenario right. <laughs> with fantasy and all that stuff. So um, that's my next thing that I'm, I'm working on. Oh, very cool. Could you know when those are going to be out or like, um, we're all just like wanting to know all the things. <laughs> <now. laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I will probably, well, I'm, I'm going to try and get that one published with a publisher maybe. Okay. Um, so, cause the Silver Blood and Emberhawk series is actually independent. I have no idea how it actually got anywhere, won any awards <laughs> being independent. Okay, I, but... I also did not know that. Oh, series. really? <laughs> yeah. Yay! Mission success. I fooled everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so all my books are indie so far. Um, so if I do sell that one, then it'll depend on the publisher's timeline. That's true. Yeah. So. Um, well, good. Yeah. Well, and that's what the one thing I tell people when they ask for writing advice, I'm like, you can self-publish. You can independently publish your books, but you make sure it's an awesome cover. The writing is excellent because this is your introduction to the world. Like they're going to know. And from that first book, if you're just going to put it out there and it's not really edited, the cover is not great. When they see your name in the future, they're going to be like, eh, I don't really like that. So the fact that like, okay, this cover and the award and the writing's really good great job. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I do have a uh, unfair advantage in that I work for publishers and I have an amazing team around me. I mm -hmm. make sure like if you go indie, make sure you hire professionals, <laughs> you yes. know, and in, in your team around you. Um, because um, if I hadn't like broken the bank a little bit to hire some professional editors, I definitely would never have, you know, arrived where I, <laughs> where yeah. I am. Not that I've made it or anything, but like, you know, yeah. I just, I received so much help that I didn't know I needed from editors. They are absolutely worth every penny. And so I have multiple editors working with me on every project. Um, my first series, I actually hired a different cover designer just because I didn't have that much experience mm. doing covers at that point. Um, and then my voice actress, um, I'm so blessed to have her. And uh, so I didn't I didn't do my own recording in my closet. And some people can do that, okay? I've heard some authors do amazing, like Jillian Bronte Adams. She can absolutely yeah. like do her own recordings. And then I, I was started that looking talent. in another book and I'm like, this this is this sounds familiar and I went and looked and it was her she did other books too. I can't remember who she did oh, anyway. she did Jill Williamson that's uh, who it the was. Blood of yeah. Kings series that's yeah. who it was and I'm like this sounds really familiar and I went and looked I'm like okay she's a writer and a voice actress okay yeah so some some authors do have like professional level talent at multiple like yourself you're like a professional marketer obviously <laughs> you're very very good at marketing um and so when we don't have that we need to like recognize our own mm -hmm. shortcomings if we're going to be indie and make sure that we hire professionals if you want to appear professional and then fool people like trisha goyer exactly. into thinking that you're actually published traditionally i, I totally i <laughs> i like i would have said i would have swore like oh yeah this is a publisher okay there we Yay. go. But it's so well done. It's so well done. I mean, the Thank maps you. in the front, the layout. I mean, well, of course you do this for a living, but <laughs> there's nothing in here that would have screamed to me like, oh, this is uh, independently published. So great Thank job. You. See, it's cheating. <laughs> I'm just cheating the whole time. <laughs> it, well, you know what? I've noticed, and I bet the avid readers will comment on this um, and leave a comment. And most of them listen later, so we'll leave comments later. But they don't really, when they buy them online, especially, they're not always looking at the publisher. So they're looking at the cover. They're looking to see what's interesting, maybe read the first sample. And so I think, I mean, all the publishers are awesome. But I think it's not the same as it used to be where you had to go into a bookstore and you had to look on the shelf and pull stuff out. It's, it's, uh, it's easier to get out on the market if you do a really good job. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of um, promoters that will only work with traditionals. And so mm -hmm. uh, I've managed to fool a few other people. That way. <laughs> oh, there you go. There <laughs> but, yeah, you go. really, when you're on the shelf, you're competing mm -hmm. with the best, you know. Yeah. So if you if you want your book to sell, I mean, it needs to look good. You know, I mean, and some people are hobby writers and that's totally cool. But for mm -hmm. my books, I wanted to shoot for the stars. Yeah. I love that so much. And I love that, you know, you're getting these out there. You have other things in the works. And I'm sure, like most authors, dozens of other ideas that are just waiting, waiting patiently for <laughs> what's next. So are you always going to continue, do you think, writing the speculative fiction genre? Or do you have other ideas in other genres? 
Um, every, all of my ideas are speculative in one form or another. Um, I might mm -hmm. do, so my first series was kind of a hybrid of sci-fi and fantasy. Um, okay. What was the name of that? Cause I'm, oh, uh, I <laughs> okay. well, it was my first, so, you know, I'm not like, it's might not, not be as shiny as this new series, but it's called the Sentinel <laughs> Trilogy and the first okay. book is Sentinel and it's very much meant for teenage boys. So the main character is okay. a very annoying teenage boy. So I've had some adult readers read it and be like, this guy is so annoying. But then the teenage boys are like, he's just like me. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. that's what that one is. It's a lot of fun. It's like an apocalyptic uh, mm. dystopian, you know? which was great uh, several years ago before we went through our own little version of the apocalypse. <laughs> and then yeah. nobody wanted to read that anymore. And I totally understand. Yeah. That is so funny. That is so funny. It's like, oh yeah, now we know what this is like to live through this. Right. It's not all yeah. it's cracked up to be in the novels. Yeah. So when I mean, you maybe if I had magic, it would be better, but yeah, that would, that would have helped a lot of things. Um, so one question Aaron asked that we, can go back to is he said what made you want to write a book um and so this is i'm going to add on to that and write in speculative fiction because um i th i was amazed the first time i went to realm makers which is this awesome speculative fiction conference there's so many writers so many awesome writers and i think this is why i love sharing about the award winners that realm makers award winners on avid readers because there is so many books out there that i think the general christian readers never hear about so tell me like yes you want to write a book which is a big commitment anyway but yes you want to write a book and you want to write speculative fiction and write and all these fun fantasy elements well um I truly like had ideas spinning around in my head since like childhood um I think I won the storyteller award in <laughs> uh, Miss Purdy's preschool I'm not sure if that was for my creative imagination or creative lying the world <laughs> may never know but um <laughs> I honestly I didn't want to be a writer uh because I didn't like the subject of English in school very much mm -hmm. and I I didn't make super super good grades in it and so I thought that's what it was. Turns out writing is more about the creativity and the storytelling element. And my editors have to deal with all the English class stuff. Yes. Um, but I resisted it for years, honestly. But I really wanted to be in, in Christian fantasy and sci-fi because I was raised in a, a Christian home. And um, there was not like yeah. a lot at all. I mean, there was Chronicles of Narnia, which don't get me wrong. Okay. It's amazing. And the Lord of the Rings. And I had Frank Preddy and Ted Decker and they mm -hmm. were fantastic. And that's it. Yeah. And so, and I, I didn't like all the other stuff. I didn't want to read romance. I wanted adventure, you know, and there just wasn't that for me. And I wasn't allowed to read a lot of other things. And mm -hmm. so it left this little void in my little childhood. Yeah. <laughs> and I grew up thinking like, I'm going to fill that void you know, mm. and, but I didn't think of myself as a writer. And I thought that the stories in my head were just, you know, no good. I didn't have any confidence in it. So I decided to work in Christian publishing. So by the grace of God, I got an amazing job for Thomas Nelson publishers and they were, then they were acquired by Harper Collins. Um, and that was a huge amount of fun. And then uh, God told me that I needed to quit and start writing my own books. And I was like, God, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but I work in publishing and I know a lot about publishing and I can't just like quit and indie publish. It's not a thing. And like indie publishing was like not a thing at that time. Right. And it was really looked down upon and there were good reasons why it was looked down upon at the time. And I was like, gatekeepers yeah. sometimes serve a purpose, you know? And so I knew better than God. And so he literally just basically hit me over the head with a two by four for about six months until I was forced to quit <laughs> and wow. actually start writing um and so but through that i i learned so so much doing my own stuff indie mm -hmm. and now the way that i can serve other authors both indie authors and through um enclave publishing the publisher that i work for um i would never have had all of this experience or the ability to to serve other people unless i had done it myself so now maybe god was right okay like, <laughs> I know. Maybe. It's like he, he always seems to know somehow. <laughs> Maybe he knew better than me. I don't know how, like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I love that. But I love also that you come to the editorial with that background knowledge of what it is like to work on your book and then 
go through editing and look at the covers and say, that's not my cover at all. I mean, you've been through all the things so you could, you could help people. So I love that you're on that journey. And also that you saw the void there from a very young age, which I think is super cool because my, my family is the ones that my older kids that are now in their uh, early thirties and late twenties, they were watching all the star Trek and the Stargate and all these things with Stargate. Yeah. Yeah, Stargate. <laughs> uh, so I know all of it. So they love that. My, I remember, I think my favorite, my husband's favorite book still is arena. Um, yes. Yes. So by Karen Hancock, right. Karen Hancock. Yes. And yes. so they, Ted Decker, they just would eat up all this stuff. And so now I'm, I'm the one saying, Hey, have you read this? Hey, you should try this. Cause I'm reading it now. I'm loving it. It's awesome. And so it's so fun that now we have all this common books that we talk about and really enjoy. Um, and I, and it's, I went to realm makers originally to go with my son who was writing speculative fiction. And then I started interviewing authors and reading the books and I'm like, these books are so good. Like they're so well done and so well written that um, I'm having a blast doing this. I am so, so, so blessed to work with Enclave. I think we're the premier publisher of Christian science fiction fantasy. There's like some other publishers that have dabbled in it a little bit, but at Enclave, mm -hmm. we're like solely focused on Christian speculative fiction. And so it's so much fun to not only do my own writing, but to be involved and to be helpful to the industry as a whole to make this genre happen. Because I know there's a lot of homeschooled kids out there. Yes. Who their parents are very selective about what they read. And so we want to provide something for them. Exactly. And I speak at homeschool conferences and that's, they will say, what is this, you know, is this appropriate? And yes, and I'll say everything on my table is appropriate. Like they get one kiss at the end of the book. That's, and you can go over to this booth over here and everything over there is appropriate too. So it's, it's awesome that they're doing that. And I will mention, cause you mentioned about how some people think I can't write, even though I have all these stories in my head because I did really bad in English. I, I've done homeschool writing classes before when I they come in and this is like junior high and high school and I'm like I don't care about your spelling I don't care about your grammar I'm not even going to look at that you will pick that up as we're going through this I want you to come up with the craziest wildest stories that you can and these kids that the parents are like they won't write anything and I can't get them to do their English homework are all of a sudden writing novels and one of my first years my one of my students got her novel novel picked up by guideposts I mean it's just amazing but I think so many times because we have the English teacher in our head that's saying this isn't a complete sentence we just shut down our creativity so I love that you're like, hey, I can tell stories and I don't have to like have all this perfect grammar because yes, that's what we have editors to do. Right. Yep. And I'm so do. glad they we do have a editors. lot. Yes, they, <laughs> they do. do a lot. <laughs> they earn their keep, let me tell you. Yep. Okay. So Marsha said, it's so good to hear someone else say they have to be hit with a board to get something. For me, it's usually a brick. Yeah. So <laughs> God's I like, mean, either Hello. one. It felt like a board when it was like <laughs> smashing into my psyche, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. And so it's so true that, and I think there's a lot of people out there. Um, I know this is for readers, but I think there's a lot of readers that wish someday they'll write a book and they think I can't. So I think Jamie and I are just saying, maybe you should try it. You never know until you try it. You can. And you know what? Anybody can write a book. If you have a story in your heart, I would definitely encourage you to write it. It doesn't have to be professionally published. It doesn't have to sell a million copies. There is something that is beautiful and about our creativity in that mm -hmm. we're mimicking the creativity of our God when we are participating in this. And it's with any kind of art. And so you got to think about it in perspective because a lot of people will think, oh, I've written something, therefore I have to get it published. Well, that's kind of ridiculous. Like who would like do their first painting? Would you go up to that painter and be like, wow, it's your very first one. Have you like, is it in an art gallery? Like, or yeah. would, would you go up to a musician after they've just done their first song and be like, cool, when's your next, or when's your first concert? Like mm -hmm. we don't, we don't put, you know, other, you know, forms of art to that test that we hold writing to. So I encourage people to write and learn the craft of writing, enjoy it, have so much fun with it. And don't put all that pressure on it to get it published or to get it published with this house or whatever. Because a lot of times also, there's a lot of lessons for us to learn. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm definitely not a masterful writer like Trisha is. Oh. <laughs> but I, I mean, it took me 
years, like at least five years before I could even like decently string a story together. There's just, there's so much to learn Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, but there's not really a college degree or anything. Like you have to practice yourself, you know, to, to learn the craft. Um, so yeah. So your first book can just be for you. It can just be a lot of fun. Give it a few years and, you know, maybe it'll be a third book, you know, that, that hits it, you know, and and goes gold or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, so Steve Lobby is the publisher of Enclave and I met him at my first conference. Oh yeah. In 1994, he was there his first conference as an editor. I was there as a new writer and every year I would submit stuff and these wonderful people at conferences like, well, this is pretty good. Or you can work on this. It was in 2000, I think 2000, 2000 or 2001, I was at a conference. I sat down for lunch with Steve and I had submitted. He'd seen so much junk submitted to him. <laughs> he knew my name from all the junk I was submitting him. And <laughs> as we were doing interactions, he's like, excuse me for a moment. He looked at me and goes, this is the book that's going to get published. Because he saw all the changes and it, it was, he didn't, he didn't pick it up because it wasn't what they were doing at their publishing house at the time. But uh, he saw all those years from 94 to 2000 submitting stuff, trying, and then he could see the one that like, okay, this is going to be it. And so uh, don't feel like you're the only one that (laughs) at the beginning just doesn't make sense or it's not working or you're trying and it's not really coming together. So. Well, Hey, Uh, I, I love Steve and Steve is the best boss ever. Let me tell you, but he rejected me too. And I'm president of the Steve lobby rejects club. (laughs) That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so I had actually pitched him Emberhawk, and he didn't want it in, for for Enclave. And so when it won the award, we were both at the awards dinner together, and he looked at me and he's like, "You just had to prove me wrong, didn't you?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 could, I, I like, could totally ah. see him doing that too. I uh, might have run away and hid. I might have done that. Yeah. Yeah, that is so awesome. Okay, so I always love to ask, uh, what are some Christian fiction? books that you have enjoyed it doesn't have to be recently but just what are some things because our readers love to know what other people are reading oh my goodness okay well i should just pull some off of my my bookshelf back here okay so nadine brandis um she is a i'm a huge fan of hers both her writing and her newsletter she does um the biblical womanhood but she is a fantastic writer. She writes Christian young adult fantasy for Thomas Nelson. And her latest book is Wishtress. I think I have the arc right here. Hang on. Grab it. it. Grab okay, it. I got it. I got it. Okay, so Ooh, Wishtress. This Looks is a fantastic. So good. Yeah, so this is a fantastic book. I also love um, Sarah Grimm. She has the Scarlet Moon oh, okay. uh, Children of the Blood Moon series with Enclave. And so if you like Dungeons and Dragons and role playing games and stuff like that, this style is she's she writes similarly to mine. And she's also my BFF. But you know, uh, <laughs> but yeah. really, this is a hey, seriously, it's a really good series. friends can totally promote each other. It's okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, Mary, Mary Weber also writes a fantastic series. Um, her Storm Siren series. I'll just I'll just pull stuff off my shelf. Let's just, just pull do it this. off. Just as, yeah, 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 pull yeah. up, pull up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I give you permission. Thanks. This series. Yeah, Storm look at Siren. that. Yes. Yeah. So this was a. I really enjoyed this series, and she's not, not afraid that. to kill off characters. So your darlings are at risk, and it'll keep you at the edge of your seat. <laughs> um. Let me see. Oh my goodness. Really just anything by Enclave Publishing. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, my uh, independent books are under an imprint called Fayette Press. And we only do Christian indie sci-fi fantasy books. So we have, yes. So I'm not the only author there. There's many different authors there at FayettePress.com and they would love your support as well. Oh, that would be awesome. So lots of places to look. I also love Morgan Bessie. Um, yes it's another one it's so good I just was like I told my husband like you gotta get this book you have to listen to this book you have to, it's you have to listen with me and he's like past me now like he's yeah. read more than I have and I'm like okay slow down I need to <laughs> catch up but yeah so I love I just love there's so many great authors out there so many great books it's awesome yes she's like I'm, I'm not- looking 
I'm looking for some more. She's looking for some more. Sorry. It's okay. So I also sell on Clive books. And so I think some of mine are missing from my personal collection because they're in my inventory because I'm doing a yeah. book event in a couple of days. But uh, Morgan Bussey's book, um, Secrets in the Mist. Yes. Yeah. Whoa. It's, and I, <laughs> it's really, and I had really good. Her, I had her on here. Um, so it is steampunk. Um, and it's they're zombies, but they she calls them the un dead undead no unborn un what does she call them she calls them the something the un i don't know but they're not super prominent in the story even and though, they're yeah. yeah and so it's not like a zombie like those tv show zombies they're just they show up here and there yes, yeah and they're but, not like she doesn't go into like they're super nasty or anything um no. i mean it is a story about the zombies but it's more about why are the zombies there and how do we cure can we cure them? And if we can, how do we do that? I think it is the undead. The undead. Anyway, the funny thing. The, I'm forgetting. A funny, a funny side story before we wrap it up. My husband was listening to The Secrets of the Mist. And because I told him, like, you need to go re- listen to this. And I had listened to it already. And so he's listening. And he walks every evening around our, like, neighborhood. It does a couple miles. And it was foggy that night. And he was listening to it. And he got home, like, five minutes or ten minutes faster than he usually did. I'm like, what is going on? He's like, that book was freaking me out because it's a mist. <laughs> There's a mist that all these zombies come out of. Uh, the undead oh, no. Of. And he I was would like not looking going back over. His, he was looking back <laughs> over his shoulder. He, he walks us every night and he was like home super fast. He goes, yeah, I just like hightailed at home. So, oh, yeah. Super <laughs> you could definitely creep yourself out. But, you know, if you've got a handy dandy airship like they do in the book, then you'll be fine. I know. Yes. And I have some airships in my book that I am doing. <sighs> For on play, that I'm so excited for your There's book series. Airships and there is spider tanks that crawl across the, the cobblestone streets of Prague during World War II. Oh, and Jamie's oh going to be here seeing all these things in a couple, well, in a couple weeks ish. <laughs> as I'm as, so excited. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I'm me and Steve are going to keep the whip on you. <laughs> I know. Better turn it in on time. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm loving it. So it's so fun that, um, I mean, all the things I love, World War II, uh, Jewish history and folklore. Um, now I love steampunk and airships. So it's all going to be in this book. It's it's good. Mm-hmm. I should mention one thing. I do side projects as well. And I don't know if she's announced the title yet, but I'll go ahead and slip it in here. Sharon Hink is writing an independent book mm. that I did the interior design for. And it is the World War II story of her grandmother and what she experienced. And it is phenomenal. It it made me cry. Okay. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's really good. I can't say what it's called yet because I'm not sure if it's been announced yet, but keep your eye on Sharon Hink. It's an incredible story. And she's a great, great writer too. Yes. Yeah. So good. Okay. We could talk all day, but I'm going to go eat tacos. So <laughs> where can people go find more information about you and all of your books? Cool. Um, well, you can find me at jamiefoley.com. Or um, for this series, you can go to emberhawk.com. And this is how it's spelled. And that's how my name is spelled. Awesome. Yeah, super easy. Jamie Foley said, like, I, that's how I would spell it if I were to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jamie, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure, Tricia. And I can't yep. wait to read your book. Oh, well, I'm enjoying yours. So <laughs> we're going to just have fun reading each other's books. Oh, go enjoy it over some tacos. It'll be way more enjoyable together. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.